I guess Christmas has come early for me. It's either early Christmas or a late birthday gift. I'll let you decide which it is. But I was made aware. I was at work and I got a message. And it's like, you're not going to believe this. I'm telling you, you're not going to believe this. Are you sitting down? I was, in fact, sitting down, so I didn't have to sit down. I was already doing it. But they said there's a making of Yaira trailer mini documentary on the Ripaverse channel. And I was like, you, you have to be kidding me, right? Because it made me think, I'm like, the only reason that they would have done like a making of, of the trailer uh, like as a documentary is because they thought it was going to be a slam dunk. They thought it was going to come out and just blow everybody's minds. Everybody was going to love it. And they were going to want to know so much more about this uh, about this amazing teaser trailer and, and how Eric and the team put it together with the Saska sisters. I don't think they expected the amount of like just humor and laughter and, and making fun of them uh, because of this trailer. I don't think they expected that. I think that, that Eric thought this was going to be a big wow moment because he said, I don't remember when he said it, but at some point, Last year, they asked Eric about competing with the MCU, and he's like, no, we make comics. We're not competing with Hollywood. And, and now they're making, like, live action stuff. And look, here's the thing. After seeing this teaser, if you haven't seen it, I reacted to it, basically, uh, with uh, Bob Organized Chaos and Danger from Actual Fandom. It's up here on this channel. I'll link it in the corner over here. If you haven't seen it, um, we reacted to it. Bob and Dane had not seen it, so for them, it was like a first-time viewing experience. It was a lot of fun. Uh, anyway, we're going to watch this, and um, yeah, I don't think Eric has to worry about competing with Hollywood uh, based on what we got with the Yaira uh, teaser trailer. But this is going to be a treat. It's 10 minutes. This is probably going to be a longer video, so let's go ahead and check this out. I want to point out that uh, a lot of the pushback that people were giving on uh, criticism of the trailer was they were like, oh, it's like the first time that Eric has ever made anything like this. So you should cut him some slack. They want us to grade it on a scale, right? They wanted us to cut him some slack because it's first time. Um, Eric was not the primary person doing the work on this trailer. If you looked, there was a lot of people attached to the trailer that were there that have been in the industry for a long time. Almost every single person that worked on this, primarily the Saska sisters, have made TV shows and movies. The Saska sisters are actual filmmakers. So there's no excuse for it to look as bad as it did. There's no excuse. These are people that have done this before. It wasn't like Eric July was working the camera, working the lights, doing the makeup, doing the stunts, writing the script. Like that's He wasn't doing that. So they don't get some sort of pass for it being bad. They, they all know, everybody on the set was competent enough to know how to make uh, a proper trailer or TV show or whatever. <laughs> a little bit of history here for everybody. This font is awful. Mary July, founder, owner of Riververse, creator of Isom, Yaira, and some of the initial characters of this entire universe. I wear many hats here, but I would not uh, have it any other way. This audio is weird. I'm wondering if it's my, it's, I don't think it's my headphones. It sounds like the mic they were using um, wasn't like a boom mic. It doesn't sound like it's close enough to him to catch his audio. By the way, why are you wearing Carhartt stuff, Eric? Weren't like uh, right-leaning people, left of center people supposed to be boycotting that because of their mandates? For people that did not get the uh, the vax, they they had mat mandates back in 2022, I think. So I thought that you guys were boycotting it. I guess not. I guess we're not doing that either. Working on Yaira has been amazing. To be gifted the opportunity to be her writers, I consider that we are her nannies. <laughs> Eric July gave birth to her, and then he's like, <laughs> I need a strong female influence times two. Action! Strong female influence. That's really interesting that that was left in here because if anyone else from like Marvel, DC, any of these other companies, Disney, use the term strong female influence, there would be a thousand videos attacking them over that statement. But the hypocrisy that comes from Eric and his company to the people that are willing to buy this stuff, they just, they don't even bat an eye at it. It's mind blowing to me. I have to say the one thing that I am extremely um, 
I don't know, perplexed by when it comes to Eric is just how many of the people that follow him and support his brand do so even when he contradicts the values that he says he has as a business owner and what he's trying to do with his company. It's just, it's shocking to me. It really is. It's been my longest childhood dream to be able to give a future generation of fans what I got from comic books. Like these women and these men, they taught me how to be strong. They taught me how to have morals and morals, not because like you're afraid of like hell, but doing the right thing because it's the right thing to do. I mean, you were already working in the industry. You, you made comics for Marvel. You've got films going on. You act like Eric opened up this door for you to get into the industry when in fact you were more connected to the industry than Eric was. That's, that's really, really fucking weird. And to be able to do that for a whole new generation, man. To see not only the characters brought to life, that in itself is unbelievable, but there's certain scenes that are basically direct adaptations for what, what it was happening in the comic. Adaptations? So you mean it's not one for one? It's an adaptation. Like, you do understand that the term adaptation means that it's different from. So it's different from the source material. You do understand what that word means, right, Eric? Because I, I thought that you guys didn't like that. Again, maybe you've misrepresented yourself in the hundreds of videos you've made where you've been, you've had issues with the way there were changes from comic books to live action. Maybe, maybe I have misunderstood your stance on that. And that's just crazy to me to see that play out and be brought brought to life in the way that it is. It's unbelievable. Like I said, it's something that I can't. Dear audio mixer, why is the music louder than his voice? Can you correct that? <laughs> like bring the music down a little bit? It's... I don't know if I'm ever going to get, get used to it. I'm fine with that because it's an amazing experience when you see you know, everything set up, makeup all. Uh, costume, everything, and they're like, that's a character that I created. You know what's funny about this? Um, it's almost like Eric is experiencing what it's like for all of these people that work in the industry when they're making a project, right? So he's in this space where they give a lot of shit to, to people that are making videos and doing interviews, talking positively about their media, whether it be TV shows, movies, whatever. They give them a lot of shit because they were not actually creating stuff. Eric wasn't creating stuff. He wasn't in charge of making anything. And I think the, the, the amount of time he spends in this space with creative people, people that actually make things that, that do art for a living, I think he's starting to understand that all of the dumb criticism that he has been making with people like Az, all the things he's been yelling about and screaming about, it's so stupid in retrospect because he's actually experiencing the joy of something that he considers his own being made into a live action uh, trailer or whatever. And I'm not trying to take any of that away from him because I do think it's important that he learns this, that this helps him grow as a person. Now, if it does, if, if he takes, he walks away from this and it changes him and makes him a better individual, then, you know, that's awesome. Um, but if he goes right back, sits back at his desk, gets on his podcast with as and starts screaming about people making things and the way they hype up their own content, it just screams hypocrisy. That's all that does. This is why people that, that make stuff don't typically go on camera and start shitting on everything because it looks really bad. Walking on set and seeing Yaira off the panels, that's like the greatest feeling in the world. Yeah, I love doing stunts because I, I do. It makes me feel like a superhero, honestly. I feel like, you know, we got we got the pulse rate going a little, heart rate going a little bit faster than normal. I think okay, so Marshall there, the, the guy they were just talking to, Marshall Bingham, is a stunt actor in Canada. And he's worked on major things. Major things. He's been on Supergirl. He's been in this atmosphere before. So this little like him sort of puffing up working, you know, basically falling from the sky onto a car. That's literally all he does in the trailer, which it's probably the best thing in the trailer to be completely honest. So respect for that. Um, but this isn't his first time doing superhero stuff. He's been, he's worked, I believe he worked on predator. He's worked on a lot of stuff where he's done fantastic things. So I can't imagine that this, this little teaser trailer compares to any of that, to be quite honest. I think that it's just, 
it's such a creative you know universe that that eric has created uh, having yaira you know as 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 the lead in this is is something that a lot of people are going to be able to look up to and it's just kind of a, a cool twist you know it's such an original universe what do you what do you know about the, the cool twist like what about this universe is a cool twist is it is it the derivative stuff that exists in this universe What's the cool twist? This sounds so performative to me. Like, absolutely 100% performative. Uh, Alpha Core is derivative. Everything in Alpha Core is derivative. Uh, Yaira, so far, what we know about her, and the keep in mind, the people that are there on set probably don't know any more than we, because this was like last year. So they probably don't know much more than we know other than what's necessary for the trailer they're making. So... What is a cool twist? What's what is so unique about Yaira that would would make you feel that way about it? I I just I'm I am completely lost in what that even means. You've got DC and Marvel kind of owning the the planet. Okay, Mackenzie Gray. This guy is also a very progressive person. By the way, uh, uh, Marshall, the stunt guy, uh, supported diversity and stunt people. Um, he talked quite a bit about diversity in that field. And why it's important. So he's a very progressive person. Uh, the last guy that we had, it was Andre Anthony. He's also been on tons of content on the CW. He's been in several, uh, you know, uh, TV shows that support diversity and things like that. Mackenzie Gray has been in so many things, uh, probably in the hundreds, if not more, uh, productions where he's interacted with people and and stood up for progress. I've, I, on his social media, he seemed to be again another very liberal progressive person. I, I, I do believe that Eric July's the reason he has positioned himself with the Saska sisters, the reason why they are so important to him and his company is so he can get a lot of the people, well, not only get the people on board with them, but also to have connections with the industry, with TV, film, all of these things. That That's why the Saska sisters are so important to him, which is why he didn't back down when people were trying to quote unquote cancel them, AKA just bring up the hypocrisy in him working with the Saska sisters in the first place. So all of these people that are involved with this production, the people that are connected with Yaira, uh, especially the lead uh, character, which I don't know if they're going to talk to her here or not, but Morgan, who plays Yaira, um, I don't believe she's even an actress. I think she's just a friend of the Saska sisters. So all of all of the things that are getting done in this production uh, happened outside the power of Eric July, outside of the influence of Eric July. All the things, all the Ripa people, all you guys out there that are that are buying into the Ripaverse because you think that it's so different and it's going to be a, a different brand and, and it's got different values behind it. This tells me that that's not the case. Eric is literally willing to work with people who have completely view, opposing viewpoints. So when he says something like, leave all of those issues at the door, that literally means that he has no values that are above the standards of making money. Making money to him is more important than his personal values. That's the reality. So when he gets on camera and he screams about how woke is destroying stuff and you know diversity is bad and people that, that are doing all this stuff, it's, it's all bad. He's willing to put all of that aside to make these projects happen, to make money and hype up his company. Just remember that when you're spending money on this. Like when someone says, leave all of that at the door, that means that they, they have no standards, no values to what they believe in and they're willing to do anything to make money. I just want you to remember that. I think that he's come up in the middle and shown there's, a, there's an audience for the alternates to to dc and marvel and he's really an amazing artist he's no shit amazing artist hold on hold on what so first of all um there's always been space for independent comics and comics outside of dc and marvel no offense to mckenzie he probably doesn't really know that much about it um i know he was in smallville he's been in this world for a while um he's done work in the industry for a while but i don't think he knows a lot about the independent space when it comes to comic books i just don't believe that he does uh however uh, yes, there's always going to be a need for independence. Did he just call Eric July an artist? Like, like in other words, a comic book artist? To to DC and Marvel. And he's really an amazing artist. He's uh, The fact that he's created this because he just wanted to okay. make a comic book. And an artist. There was so much interest in him and in what he's doing that he, he went from a goal of 100,000 to, what was it, 2 million? I mean, whatever it made. He doesn't even know. I think the... the... <laughs> Like it looks really funny to me because they, they post the numbers up here so that everybody knows for a fact that it was more than two million. He doesn't even really know the numbers. He just he got a very brief history on Eric July, and then they asked him about working on this project. 
it's it's hilarious actually uh it, it, that's pretty amazing but i think he's he's a very cool guy and i think uh i'm honored to be part of it Fans are going to feel so excited when they watch this teaser. They're going to latch on to these characters and the story. They're going to fucking, excuse my language, they're going to fucking want more. Writing. Really? They're going to want more based on... Okay, Kia King that we just saw. Another very progressive person. Massive supporter of BLM, of Black Lives Matter. Something that Eric has made at least three or four videos denouncing. And talking about why it's not a good organization, it's not a good movement. But he's talked about that quite often. So the fact that he has someone working on this project with him that is a supporter of BLM either means that she <laughs> doesn't know that Eric feels that way. Because why would she? I don't think she really keeps up with him any. Like, has she been a huge fan of Eric July for a while? I, I don't think so. Um, which means that that he doesn't care. He's not even digging into the people that are associated with the projects he's working with. Completely oblivious to that. He doesn't care anymore. He doesn't care anymore. For Marvel is what introduced us to Eric July. And I remember uh, knowing that he was like, he's a huge comic nerd. And so people are like, oh, we sent his our, your comic to him to just to see what he would say. And everyone was like, oh, you're going to get ripped apart. And I was like, no, I think this guy's going to like it. And Eric loving that was so cool. And that's how we kind of became friends. So every time we would write an issue, we partially wrote it in mind being like, oh, I bet this Eric July guy is going to review it. I want it to be. Did I don't know the timeline of events here, but did they say when they were writing their comics, I'm assuming they mean Black Widow or one of their other like gore filled, like, you know, nuns killing people. I don't know if that's the one they're talking about, but when they were writing Black Widow, I guess they made, they were writing it thinking about whether or not Eric July would like it. That was part of their motivation in writing the comic this is like next level sh like is this about yaira is this about making we're four minutes in and it sounds to me like this is just a a round table of people giving like a handy to eric that's what this seems like i i four minutes in and we haven't even really talked about the process of making the trailer other than vague stuff about like oh it's going to get you excited for these characters or whatever like what is this what is this? Why are why are the Sasuke sisters like, oh, we, everything we do is for Eric. We just, everything is for Eric. It's really, really fucking weird. To be really boss and I want him to really dig it. Working with Eric and getting to develop a friendship and just, he's a guy that we text at four in the morning and I ask like, hey, how tall is Altona? <laughs> You know, and is she nearsighted or farsighted? And he's so cool about it. And you can tell he actually cares. I was really stoked to see the illustrations of Stefania first. And you can just almost, it helps you imagine. All right, Maya J. Maya J here. Okay. Did a little looking back on her too on Instagram. She supports queer art. Um, she's a very big supporter of queer art. Shout out to queer artists. Um, I support queer art, obviously. Uh, but again, someone connected to the, the LGBTQIA community in one way or another that Eric, who we've talked about in several other videos, spends a large amount of time on his channel talking shit about who is associated with a character in his universe. I don't understand. Uh, like, how can you continue to support the Ripaverse movement when it is doing and associating everything in the industry that he seems to hate? that you guys seem to hate. These are people that if they were associated with other projects that were not the Ripaverse, you would have gone after them for their affiliation with certain things, for the stuff they've said. Like, it's just, the hypocrisy is so thick in this. I am shocked. Shocked. Imagine the character, because it's so well thought out before, and you're like, okay, cool. I can see what kind of damage this character can do and how destructive she can be, but also has this really human component about her too even though she's discovering her powers for the first time it's really epic that makeup on her face looks really bad it looks like um finger paint for rave <laughs> to see um those two worlds combined no i love eric i mean yeah i was lucky enough to get to talk to him on set that day for about half an hour and um yeah it's just like the fact that he created this, turned it into something that obviously the fans are responding to in such a 
big way. The sky's the limit for him. You know, there's there's so many characters and so many stories that he's coming up with and, you know, having this live action aspect to it. Um, I think that the fans are going to be super stoked about it. And um, yeah, I'm I, I'm a fan of Eric and I'm excited to, to follow him. But are you really a fan of Eric? I mean, I can't imagine that that guy sits around watching Eric July's content. I mean, this is a guy who's been associated with filming in Vancouver, which is extremely diverse. Someone who is probably associated with a lot of queer people. I can't imagine you're watching Eric July's channel where he shits all over queer people constantly and going, yeah, this guy, he's got it going on. I just, I don't believe that. Sorry. The twit and the foundations that are being laid. He flew all the way to Canada, which is insane. And he's playing a really hands-on role, which I think is just so great as a, a leader in this this awesome. So Morgan Boot is a very mysterious figure. Um, doing a little bit of digging, uh, I found out that she's not connected to any other media that I can find unless she's using a different name. Uh, she seems to be just really good friends with the Saska sisters, which is fine, but it's just a little odd that she's associated with this production because there's a lot of people on set, almost everybody that has been associated with this has been pretty well-rounded in terms of acting and, and the work they've done in, in Vancouver. She's an anomaly. I don't really know anything about her, really. The sisters are so incredible to work with. They are so determined. They're so intelligent. And it's so great working with them to bring this comic book to life. I trust the sisters and I trust their vision and the fans are absolutely going to love what they've created. These two women are powerful and they are creating such a powerful world for us all to watch. It's powerful women kia you might want to be careful because someone else not associated with the grift that is ripaverse could take that pick it apart and say that you know you're saying stuff you shouldn't be saying in the industry because that's exactly what they would do if you were on the set of any other tv show such an incredible project to see the fans are going to be so hyped and excited man they the Saskas are gods and i, I mean that truly because we have built this friendship over these i believe you mean that this none of this entire situation here would have been possible without them. So I, I truly believe you mean that. Last year's and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna shoot them the idea. I wanna see if they, I, I didn't know what they were doing at the time, but I knew that they could crush this character as a character that was right up their alley. Yeah, I might've created that character, but they're put in a scenario in the Yaira books that I couldn't have come up with. Only the Sasuke could come up with the scenarios that they put in this character. I love working with the Saskas. I adore them. I love being in their presence and on their sets. And I think that one of the things I especially love about working with the Saska sisters is that they let me play and they give me room to invent and create things, which you don't often get in other films or the television where it's tighter scripted or in features. My dude, you've had more dialogue in this interview than you had in the trailer. Unless there's some mysterious version of it that gives you an actual storyline other than being the emasculated old guy who is threatened by a powerful woman and then told by another woman that you shouldn't feel threatened. Um, maybe, maybe there's a version of this trailer that does include actual stuff for you to do. Possibly. Just where there's a, you, know, you don't necessarily have the room to play. The Saska sisters are beautiful people. The energy is vibrant. They're just so joyous. And uh, it's just been... I want to point out, though, as we get... We're seven minutes into this. Um, I don't have an issue with the Saska sisters, personally. I don't really care about all the stuff that's happened with them. I just find that their association with Eric July and Eric July's association with them to be a very weird relationship, considering what Eric stands for and what the Saskas stand for. It's one of those weird things where, I guess money and business are more important than values which i find to be a bit strange been a pleasure so the saska sisters are awesome because well there's two of them and they have the same vision but they're awesome because there's two of them keeping it real i guess are able to divide and conquer so one of them is taking care of the cast most of the time and the other one's taking the care of the crew or wherever you look you're you see one of their friendly faces we're still very much trying to catch up with our demand and the live action portion of this this whole entire venture is something that i want to take very very serious it's not just something that i just want to do i've been 
griping, I don't know for, for how long, about adaptations of comic book characters. So now it's time for me to kind of put up, shut up, and really do direct adaptations as close as we realistically and, and possibly can. That sounds like an excuse. That sounds like an excuse. Again, as I said earlier in this video, Eric is learning how it is to be in this field, how it is to be in this industry, and how taking things that are yours and translating them into something else isn't always as easy as they make it sound. That's what this feels like to me. This is him making excuses. And he said, put up or shut up. Well, you put up, and it wasn't good. It was not good. It's all interconnected, and they're going to be characters that they actually recognize, and we're putting them in believable settings. I want to create excitement again in the superhero sphere. I think that a lot... Well, you failed. The only excitement is the fact that this came across um, unintentionally silly. Uh, this is like camp levels. This is like, you know, mama, this is camp. It really is. This is, this is your silly ridiculous era i mean honestly one of the things you could have done that would have just been a big benefit to this is not giving yaira a really dumb ever-changing hard to understand accent on purpose a lot of people have seen that the superhero sphere has turned into like this conveyor belt of released media and projects and you know there isn't even movies that like stand on their own merits it's just exciting explain to me how anything in this little trailer is different from other superhero properties nothing there's nothing in this trailer that is different fundamentally than any of the other superhero stuff that's out there except that this is bad this is objectively bad to be part of a company where a fan can say something and there's an internal discussion about it like how are we going to make this happen for them instead of being like oh listen to them they're so excited about them they're stupid our fans are the people that we're making this for i've never gotten to write something that is true i will say this i don't think that this trailer worked at all to bring in new people like if the intention of this was to bring new people to the ripperverse I don't think it worked. I showed this to some people that don't know anything about the Ripperverse. They had no clue what they were watching. This trailer, all the money spent on this, every dime that went into this. If you are a fan of the schlock that is the Ripperverse, then this trailer was for you. It was not for anybody else. I agree <laughs> with the Sasuke sisters. This was not made for anybody except for Ripperverse fans. That is it. And even some of them saw this and were like, this is not cool. Like this before where it, uh, instead of being censored, my boss says go harder. <laughs> I think that's fun. Playing Yara was a little nerve wracking at first, of course. She's very stoic and held together. And I had to learn how to do that. So I think that I was able to channel my inner Yara and really display it. Yeah, everyone should buy. Is it Yara or Yara? Did she say Yara? I think that I was able to channel my inner Yara and really display it. Yeah, everyone should buckle up because I think this is going to be an exciting journey for, for everybody involved, all the creative people, um, for the Saska sisters, the Twisted Twins. There's so many cool plans from what I've heard um, of things to look forward to. Well, there's a new superhero. So clearly this wasn't just for the comic book. I think we've established that. I know a lot of people on social media have been like, it's just was an advertisement for the comic book. I don't think that's the case. I think this was Eric um, setting like a trap out to see if there was anything that was going to get caught in that trap. Is there anything worth pursuing from doing this? Because he's even said it was cheaper than the animation, which by the way, I think the animation was more successful. I don't think it was like amazing, but it was more successful than this. But this is cheaper than the animation. Filming in Vancouver, and I am uniquely... Um, uniquely capable of talking about this because I've talked about Vancouver TV shows for over a decade with the Arrowverse stuff. Uh, filming in Vancouver comes with a lot of incentives. There's a lot of reasons why you would want to film there uh, because it is a lot cheaper than filming other places, especially when you hire local talent. Um, that's how you get the tax incentives. That is how that comes into play uh, by having people that work in Canada, that live in Canada on set with you. And in a lot of ways, it's restricted to have um, other people outside of Canada on some of the sets if you're going to get any kind of uh, discounts or benefits. I might do a stream with some actual people that I know from Canada on it talking about the, the incentives to film there. And if Eric were going to do anything in 
uh, in the world of the Ripaverse and live action, I can almost guarantee the only way that would happen is filming in Vancouver. Girl in town. That's not just me. So get ready for the Ripaverse because it's coming. Oh. We're fans before anything. And uh, we are just getting started. Like, we have a huge year with the Ripaverse. Uh, 2024 is going to be our biggest year yet. That is a wrap on your real life. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, crew. Thank you, Pop. And thank you, Aaron Twine. Come on in, have some fun, get lost with the superhero. You shouldn't just like Yaira because she's a chick. You should like her because she's badass. You shouldn't like Yaira just because she's a chick. You should like her because she's badass. The, the more they try to spin that, the more it just sounds like something that that community would have an issue with. Is there anything else here or is that pretty much it? Let's see. Might just be credits. We'll see uh, if there's anything after the title here. Well, it's just credits. Uh, Joe Gold, by the way, Joe Gold, producer of um, this documentary, as well as the producer for the uh, actual Yaira live action trailer. Joe Gold worked on, and I don't think it's out yet. I think it was filmed last year, a project called uh, My Name Was Peter. I believe that's the title. Anyway, it is a queer film about like gay resistance in World War II. Uh, so it's a very queer, positive movie. So yet again, another like liberal progressive person connected with the Ripaverse. I'm telling you, if you are someone who is a fan of Eric July and you're buying it because you think that he stands for all of the stuff that you also believe in, he is robbing you of your money. All Eric July cares about is making money. That is it. And there's nothing wrong with that. Except for the fact so many of you guys out there who defend him, and I see this on social media all the time, seem to think that you're following some kind of visionary, revolutionary person that's trying to change the industry. Eric doesn't want to change the industry. He wants to be in the industry. He wants to be a part of the industry. All of the people he worked with on this Jaira teaser, and, I, and just a little bit of the stuff that I was talking about while we were watching this, is, is a fraction of what I found when I was digging into the production on this actual little teaser that he had. Um... It's all progressive people in the industry. The Saska sisters were important in getting Eric to the place where he could work with these people, where he could get his foot in the door here. And as we see Eric progress more into that space, it's going to start to look a lot less like the stuff that Eric was doing prior to this. Like all the stuff that you loved him doing, like the monetize your haters thing that's gone now, all of that stuff is going to slowly disappear as he starts to move into the space, if he's successful doing this. We have the Ripa's End thing. Uh, where he's going to be making comics for other people. Eric July used all of this like stuff in this space, all of this grifty anti-fandom stuff to propel him into the space he's in now. And now he's working with the same people that he has chastised and attacked. Remember how much as hated Batwoman and all of the CW stuff? Almost every single person involved with the production of Yaira are connected to the productions of those shows. Arrow, Supergirl, Batwoman, uh, The Flash, all of those shows, people involved in this production of Yaira were connected to that. He's literally taking your money and making you believe that he's doing something revolutionary. He is simply just another moving part of the system that he complains about. And all this little documentary told me is that he believes that Yaira, or he believed that Yaira was going to be a huge splash, and then this was going to come out, and it was going to be a victory lap for him. This was going to be the victory lap to the race. Regardless of what Yaira does in sales, merchandise, whatever, I, I don't really care about that. I care more about the values and the statements and the things that Eric has done to get where he is, because that's what I've always talked about in my videos. It's fun to laugh and, and point at the bad stuff and all of this, but at the end of the day, Eric has spent a vast majority of his time on the social media and on YouTube attacking and criticizing queer people, diversity, women, all of these things, and now he is literally working with the people that he has spent a vast majority of his time attacking and building the foundation for all of this on. He is fooling all of you.